Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a quick November wrap up. I know it's a bit later than I normally do wrap ups, but I've just not been really in a filming mood. But I thought, you know what, today I'm going to sit down, talk about the books I read in November, because I actually read quite a lot of really good books. Some books I'm not going to talk about in this video though are the Wayward Children series books that I read, and also I read three books by Native American authors. I have two separate videos for those, so I have a video ranking the entire Wayward Children series from worst to best, and I have a video which is a vlog where I read three of my friend Michelle's favourite books and they're by three Native American authors and I'd love for you to check it out because they were really great books. So I'll have the links for those down in the description but otherwise I will talk about the other books I read in November and I actually read again some really good ones. So I'm excited to talk about them today. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do please leave a like and subscribe and let's get started talking about the first book. So the first book I'm going to talk about is The Vegetarian by Han Kang and this is a translated work from South Korea and it is a very interesting and strange book. I don't know, even with time, at the time I, when I finished it, I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. And even though it's been like a basically full month since then or over a month, I still don't know if I liked it or not. It is about this woman who develops an eating disorder basically and it manifests in her becoming vegetarian, but then it goes so much further than that. And I went into it thinking it was gonna be a thriller. It's not a thriller, it's more of a contemporary about eating disorder. And it is told in three different perspectives. So you have the woman's husband, the woman's brother-in-law and the woman's sister and they're all like trying to they're not even actually trying to help her it's just their perspective on her and her like strange behavior and basically her eating disorder and it's a very weird book it's very strange i don't know if i liked it or not to be honest the prose is weird i don't know if it's like down to the translation or if it's the original author's intent but it's just um was strange all of it was strange and there was a lot of like sexual imagery as well, which I wasn't expecting, but that was interesting. Although it wasn't always fully consensual, so, you know, be aware that that's in that. But yeah, I don't really know how to speak about this book because it's just a strange one. But yeah, it was thought provoking, if anything else. So, even if I didn't like it, it definitely made me think about things and, you know, reflect on the book and try and piece things together. So, I guess it was interesting. So my Sylvia Plath book for November, because I have to have one every month, was Mary Ventura and the Ninth Kingdom. And this is just a short story. It's one of those little books that are like the size, it's only 40 pages. And I went into it with zero expectation and knowing like literally nothing about it. And I think that is the best way to read it. So again, I'm not going to say anything at all in this vlog or in this video, sorry. Um, I'm just going to say that you should read it. It was really interesting and it leans much more into fantasy, which when I think of Sylvia Plath, I think of like contemporary work. But... It's very fantastical and it has a really interesting tone because it starts off quite light and then it like slowly grows really dark and I just loved it to be honest. It was really like such an impactful 40 pages and you know nothing was put to waste. It was intriguing, it was mysterious, it was shocking I guess you could say. I don't know I just really enjoyed it and I loved it just like I've loved everything that Sylvia Plath has ever written. A book that I'm so glad I finally read in November was Peter Pan by GM Barry and I have wanted to read this forever and I finally did it and oh my god it was so good. So this is not the Disney Peter Pan by the way, this is so dark in some aspects like for example Peter is the only one that doesn't grow up in Neverland. You know how in like the Disney movie everyone doesn't grow up? Nah. Peter is the only one that doesn't grow up and when the Lost Boys get too old for him he literally kills them and I was like are you kidding on? And he's so forgetful and that manifests in some really like hurtful ways like some of the stuff that he said because he like couldn't remember the past was like, are you actually for real? I don't know. There was like so many like shocking moments like that. And I listened to the audiobook and it was by Lily Collins and it was on Audible. I think it's free with the Audible Plus thing. And I think she did an amazing job. I loved just like the prose. It has that classic children's novel prose that I think you just can't replicate today. I don't know what it is about like children's books from like that era, but they just have this like charm to them that you just can't replicate today without it feeling forced and I just absolutely love that. I feel like I don't need to talk about like the plot of Peter Pan because everyone knows Peter Pan. If you don't, I guess I can say that it's about Peter who loves forever and he takes Wendy and her brothers to Neverland and then they have some adventures with pirates and stuff who, by the way, also Peter is so brutal to the pirates, like fully straight up kills them and stuff and I don't know, it was dark. It was really interesting though, I, it was really fun. I don't think it's going to make it to my top 10 books of 2021 just because I've read so many that it's like there's a lot of really great books in this year but I could easily see this like in a previous year like if I read this in 2019 it would definitely be my top 10 because I just hadn't read as many books back then but yeah I don't know I just loved it and I think it's definitely worth checking out if you 
enjoy the Disney movie, and even if you don't, because it is really different, it's like the whole tone of the story is different, and I think it's really great. Another audiobook I listened to in November was The Opposite of Butterfly Hunting by Ivana Lynch, and she read it herself, which is my favourite thing. This is a memoir about her eating disorder and then her recovery and then her journey into being Luna Lovegood in the Harry Potter movies and I just have such a love for Ivana Lynch, I always have. Like Luna was my favourite mo- um, character in the books and then she was my favourite character in the movies and I also just like had the biggest crush on Ivana Lynch when I was younger and then she's vegan and she's a vegan activist and I love her podcast so when she talked about this book in one of her podcasts I was so intrigued and then it came out and I was like, okay, I need to read this. And then I seen that she read the audiobook herself and I was like, okay, I need to listen. Like, I love her voice. I just could listen to her for hours and I have, like, with the podcast. I used to just listen to it, like, all day. So, the opposite of butterfly hunting is um, a memoir about her eating disorder and then her fame, I guess, as well, in the Harry Potter movies and how becoming famous didn't solve her issues. And if anything, they were always there and to this day, eating disorders have, you know, they don't go away fully, like they do stick with you. And she really goes into detail on like every aspect of it, but in a way that she's trying to be educational, but also as raw and as truthful as she can. And she really goes out of her way to not highlight like the numbers on the scale or anything like that, or how many calories she was eating, because a lot of eating disorder books, and she reflects on this in like the introduction, they basically become like ways for people with eating disorders to trigger themselves and to set goals for themselves because they're like, okay, she could do this, I can do this as well. And she tries to really go out of her way not to do that and to highlight how disgusting and like horrible her eating disorder was while at the same time acknowledging that it also brought her a lot of comfort and, you know, having an eating disorder takes over your entire life to a point and it becomes like the only thing you care about. And she talks about how when she started to recover, she was like, she felt lost and she felt like an empty person without her eating disorder because it was such a big part of her. And I don't know, I just loved this book so much. I loved like all the details she went into and the stories that she told and just the way that she told them, like everything was just amazing. And she was so brutally raw. Like she also says in the introduction, when people read like her first drafts, they were like, do you not think you've been a little bit mean? And she was like, yeah, like that's the point. And it, there's times in this book, like some of the stuff she says about like her family and the way they try to help her but in reality you know obviously families don't know how to react to things like this um I don't know like some of the stuff she said was mean but just so honestly truthful that you can't fault her for it so I absolutely love this book obviously it's not one that I would recommend to everyone because I think it is definitely it could definitely be triggering if you have had eating disorders or you suffer from one currently or anything, you know. Again, it's one of those things where it's, it never fully leaves you. It was definitely a bit to be cautious with, um, but I think it's definitely worth reading if you can or listening to it anyway because I just loved her voice. And yeah, I absolutely love this book. It's one of my favourites of the year actually. And I wasn't expecting that, but like when I went into it, I was like, okay, I'm going to enjoy this, but I don't expect it to be like one of my favourites. But I honestly think it is because I just love everything about it and it was definitely my favourite audiobook of the year, 100% anyway. So the last book I'm going to talk about is The Testaments by Margaret Atwood and this is the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale and everyone was telling me that this is not as good and to lower my expectations and I will agree that it is not as good as The Handmaid's Tale, however I still gave it 5 stars. I still really love this book. I think that I definitely see where people are coming from but I was so thoroughly engaged with this book and I was so much like just obsessed with like reading the next chapter because the book is told in three different perspectives and it's like sort of three different individual stories but then as we get closer to the end all the stories start to converge into one and I just loved the way that was done I thought it was so clever and you know just the fact that obviously it's like one girl's story and then it ends the chapter and then you move on to the next one and I'm like okay I need to know what happens in this next one and because it does feel like three different stories for most of the book I was like I could not put it down I just kept reading and reading and reading and I was so engaged I just loved the way that the book was set up. I will say though so obviously in The Handmaid's Tale a lot of the fun of Stopians, I don't know if fun is the right word but um, it's like the world building and the mystique of like how things work and I think a lot of the mystique is ruined in this book because you find out so much detail on different aspects of society and the women in society and I don't know how you pronounce that, I think it's Gilead, I don't actually know, uh, I've never watched the TV show. Um, 
yeah, like, the mistake is kind of ruined because you just find out so much information in this book about the country. And I think it ruins the fun a little bit of The Handmaid's Tale because I just love, like, how you slowly find out information through the eyes of the protagonist in that book, Offred. But, yeah, I don't know. I just love this book anyway. Like, I just thought it was so fun and so engaging. And, see, to be honest, like, I would say that The Handmaid's Tale is one that is going to be, like, a classic, like, as long as literature is about, like, people are going to read The Handmaid's Tale. The Testaments... No, it's not on the same level, but as a book, it is so just engaging, like I've said a thousand times, and fun to read that I really can't fault it in any way because at the end of the day, a book is supposed to be enjoyable and I really enjoyed myself reading it. So that's my review of the Testaments, I guess. And yeah, I will agree though, it is not as good as The Handmaid's Tale, but as a standalone book, well, it's not standalone. You know what I mean? It's really fun. I liked it. So those were some of the books I read in November. Obviously, some of the other books are talked about in other videos, like I mentioned. So check out the links in the description for the Sean and Maguire reviews and then my blog reading Native American authors. Please check them both out. They're both quite fun. They're both very different videos from this one, obviously, because this is a wrap up. One is a ranking and one is a vlog. So lots of variety there um, for whatever your preference of videos is. If you enjoyed this video, like I've already said at the start, please leave a like, it really helps my channel, and please subscribe if you're not already. And I guess I will see you in my next video.